I think I want to do a little story time. I'm going to try, if you guys don't mind. Because I want to tell you guys about my haircut. You guys are probably thinking, oh gosh, you know, here we go again. Deboki always with the haircut stories. How many haircuts can he get that will be life-changing? But this, this haircut, guys, it, it seriously did open up my eyes and it changed my life. All right. And I know it, it's this haircut is nothing special, though. There's nothing that like is I, I don't really even like this haircut, to be honest. But how I got it and I guess the timing of it, it was it was different. It was different. All right. So story time. Story time. Let me go ahead and pull up. I, I got some pictures, though, even just so that we can kind of get more immersed with it. I hope uh, we, we can just so I can bring you along better with this. If you guys didn't know, I went to Seattle this past weekend for PAX and I got there last Thursday. Uh, the whole trip was just incredible. It was a beautiful trip. I learned so much on this trip and I experienced so much, which I probably couldn't or I can't tell you guys like everything that I experienced just because a lot of it well, first like privacy things like with like just the people that I met there as well as um, just some memories just should be for yourself. So that's something I, I wanted to make sure I control like what I tell you guys. I mean, it's nothing like too big or important, but I might do more videos later on explaining my trip just because it was so impactful to me. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get in it. First, I landed in Seattle, Washington on Thursday morning. I landed there at about 7 a.m., 8 a.m. It was really early. So I had the full day in Seattle. First thing I did, though, was I stopped by a dispensary because whenever I'm adventuring a new city, I I just go to a dispensary. That's that's just what I do just to just to get myself ready for the day. So I go. I get myself fat panda. I mean, I got to rep the pandas and I get myself some wild edibles and they are th that's just going to be for my trip, you know, just to kind of make me explore a little bit better throughout. So I got these two and I. The next step is Pike's Market, Pike's Place Market. Have you guys heard of Pike's Place Market before? This is supposedly like one of the biggest touristy spots in Seattle. And, you know, for some reason, like when I go visit a new city or anywhere, I don't like touristy spots. Like I really hate touristy spots. I think it's just overrated and I... I usually just skip them. I will say, though, just some spoiler alerts that Pike's Place Market is my favorite place maybe in this whole world. I went there five times from the six days that I was in Seattle. And some days I went to Pike's, Pike Place Market twice. And each time I went, it was just an amazing experience. I experienced something new. I found something new. And this place is was such a huge growing point in my life that I just have to share it with you guys because my first impressions of this was not good. First impressions here. I landed. I'm looking at Pike's Place. It's looking super overcast. I don't really see what the specialness is about Pike's Place Market, you know, and even like just around the areas I'm looking, it's like super cloudy. I'm like, this is not going to be fun. It's really early in the morning and I don't, I'm not really feeling it. You know, I'm not really feeling it. Wait a second. We, we got to pause the story really quick. Miss Yummies, thank you so much for the six months. And also, Jenna, hello. I hope you guys are having a good time. I'm telling you, Santorini looks like Ilios. I think that's what it's called, Ilios. Um, but yo, hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. That is awesome. I'm just explaining my haircut story really quick. But thank you so much, Yummies. Hi, Jenna. Hope y'all are doing well. Um... All right. So where was I? Where was I? OK. You know, first impressions not looking that nice. You know, I'm just kind of thinking, um, wait a second. Oh, 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 I think I messed up. Hold on one second. Let me just do this. OK, because I have my album here of my pictures I wanted to show you guys. So, you know, Pike's Place Market, I'm kind of venturing around at the top level. If you guys never been to Pike Place Market before, it's just like a whole bunch of food stands and. Uh, little shops that are around because I went there so early in the morning it was really dead and it just kind of looked like a tacky flea market to me you know it kind of just seemed like 
there wasn't anything really special about this place and it wasn't blowing me away until I had ventured downstairs and Pike's Place Market has about three floors to it. Um, so I went downstairs and I found one of my favorite shops down there, which is the Golden Age Collectibles. If you guys go there, check this shop out. It's so cute. There's a lot of fun stuff in here. There's some really, really fun stuff. Like usually these collectible stores are pretty tacky and weird, but I thought it was really flavorful and I enjoyed it a lot. There was some really cool stuff. Um, I started to notice like just other little really fun shops. Like this was like a pipe store. There's like on the right hand side were pipes that if you were not 21 and up, you weren't allowed to go to. And then on the left hand side, you were able to like there was a whole bunch of plushies. It was really weird, but I thought it was kind of unique. And there was like that store. And then I started to like realize even more um, from Pike's Market. I started to see stuff that I didn't even expect. Like that, that caught me off guard, I guess. Like little hidden gems, you you could say. D just things that I started to notice. I started to live more in the moment and I started to experience more things and see more things that I normally wouldn't pick up on. Like these cute little lamp guys that were like holding the lights, you know. Um, they're kind of scattered on throughout too. Uh, like look at this guy right here. You know, like these little guys that are like popping out in, in Pike's Place Market. So after I was like kind of venturing around the lower floors a little bit, I stopped by this little cafe. Uh, I think this is called like Scenic View Cafe or something. I, I forget the exact cafe name, but um, you can sit there and you can have a really nice meal and you can like overlook a lot of like the waters and it's really beautiful. I was really nervous going into here because I don't really, I guess, eat by myself. I, I like to be alone and do stuff alone, but like it still gave me anxiety when I like go into places by myself. You know, like I feel like everyone's looking at me and I get anxious and then like I have to sit down and eat and like I'm just thinking oh you know people are just thinking look at that weirdo sitting there by himself eating but I just I tried it you know I, I said I wanted a meal I'm hungry so I sat in here and I ate a meal the meal was not that good but I'll say the experience was really good I got some like egg sandwich but I, I felt like that was a little bit of a growing point in my life so after that I, I was like all right well I guess this is all I have to see of Pike's Market right Oh, no, sorry. Let me, let me let me back up a little bit. So as as I was leaving this um, this cafe here, I then saw here it is. The barbershop. OK, the barbershop. Now, when I looked at this barbershop, I got full of anxiety because it's in the middle of a huge, busy walkway. There's one chair, one guy working there. No one was getting like stopping and getting a haircut. Everyone was just taking pictures and filming this barbershop because it looked more like a. It just looked more like an aesthetic piece in Pike's Market. Like no one was gonna just like stop by and get a haircut when they're touristing around. So I like my palms got super sweaty looking at this barbershop, and I got like really nervous because I was like just imagining myself like, what if I just like got a haircut in there? Like oh that would be I couldn't do that. Like this window is wide open. Um, people are like looking at you while you're getting a haircut. And I was like, I just can't do it. So I left. I left and I went upstairs. Okay. Oh, hold on one second. Let me, let me pop this back here. My bad. I keep messing this up. So I went back upstairs and then I saw Pike's Market evolve and change. And this is something that blew me away. After I got back upstairs, it was about 11 a.m. Pike's Market just changed completely the lighting all the lights were turned on it was so busy people were screaming there was seafood being thrown around i mean you know there's of course the fish the the, the famous fish market where people are tossing fish and just like they're, they're playing like sports with with fish you know and they're just the lighting was just beautiful i couldn't get over just how good the lighting looked with the contrast especially this one right here this one got me for some reason, this like one little sign, this fresh sign, like the way the neon lights shined on this sign, contrasting the fog and the overcast of Seattle, it just, it blew me away. And I was so upset at myself that I judged 
Pike's market so hard when I first stepped in saying like, this is a tacky flea market. And I didn't give it a fair shot. And just how drastically the change was in Pike's market, it made me want to change. So what I did was I ran back downstairs after I saw this and I sat down in that barber chair and I got myself a haircut. I, I went there and I said, I talked to him and now me and Wesley, his name is Wesley, we're really good friends. I, I visited him about five times uh, throughout my trip and I was just telling him, uh, well, first when I sat down, you know, I said, can you cut my hair? Like, what, what can you do? And he says, oh, I can do anything. I can do everything. And I said, all right, well, just cut my hair, you know, I'll just let you decide, maybe like a low fade or something. So he, he cut it. I talked with him and he's been here since 2006. He said some days he doesn't get a single customer. He's struggling really hard. Um, but this is his passion. He wakes up every morning just loving to cut hair. And he told me that he just recently got like had a little friend reunion and like they were all making big money because they were doing their own business. And they said, you should have came with us, Wes. But instead, what you want to do was just snip, snip, snip. You just wanted to cut hair. That's all you wanted to do. And now look at you. Like they're almost talking down on him. And I felt really bad. And he said he never had to hire another employee. He was always working here by himself uh, because he never needed to. Like I was his first customer that day. And I could kind of see why, you know, because that that barber shop is, is intimidating. I don't know how many of you guys would feel comfortable going into this barber shop to sit down for a haircut. But for me, Getting my haircut's a very intimate thing. And I think that's just because of how I grew up. I was very self-conscious about my hair. I always thought like my hair was never good enough. My parents were always making short jabs about my hair. And I would never get my hair cut for a really long time because I was just, it, it was just this weighing factor on me. So me just stepping out of my comfort zone, sitting in that chair and getting a haircut, I'll tell you, it changed my trip drastically. There are things that I would have never done on my trip, just stepping out of my comfort zone, if I didn't get this haircut. Because I almost left part of my, what do I want to call it? What, what can I relate that to? My insecurities a little bit. I, I left part of my insecurities there in that barbershop with Wes. You know, he helped me shed that off of me. And it, it helped me just have an amazing, amazing time. There are things that, like stories that I'll tell you, that I could tell you about my trip that it's just hard for me to believe that even happened. Um, I'll, I'll just, just lightly, you know, like what, what I, I don't want to get too much into this story, but I was trying to meet up a friend at a club. I went to the wrong club. It ended up being a bar. It ended up being a gay bar that I didn't know. And I I took a picture with him. I didn't know it was a gay bar until I saw like in the picture as I was taking it and he got my number and he wanted me to hang out with him. I didn't even make the connections with it, but you know, just like stuff like this, like I was in a really weird part of town, but this guy was awesome. The reason why I met this guy too was because he was from Alaska and I was born in Alaska. You know, like I, I was like, this is, this is like the encounters and things that I would never thought of happening to me in a way you know what I mean but it was really cool and I, I thought he was just an awesome guy I really wanted to go like bar hopping with him but then I realized his intentions and then I kind of had a I had a therapy session with my uber driver um on the way to the club and his name was Ryan um and he just I kind of broke down in his car anyways that's another story and he told me just forget about this guy you're here in Seattle you enjoy yourself you do what you need to do to make this trip the best trip that you can, you know? And like, that's, that, that was like one thing. And, you know, I had like a therapy session with my ex. I, I met up with Tammy and she's a certified therapist now. She has a PhD and she has her own practice. And I actually might start getting therapy with her because um, just that talk with her about just everything that's been happening, just, it felt like it was such a healing process. And it was just, there was a lot. There, there was a lot of stuff that happened here in this trip, but I'll say that, it started with Wesley at this barbershop. And if I could just tell you guys, if you guys are in Pike's Market, please stop by this barbershop. Just at least say hi to him. Sit down in the chair. Just maybe get like a little trim. 
you know? And that's, that's just what it is because I want to like make it so that he needs to hire another employee. You know, I, I want to see his passion succeed, the love for what he does grow because he is an incredible man and he, he changed my life. And that is, that is the story. That is the story of my haircut. And there is so much more that happened in Seattle, but that's just kind of the, the tipping point of it. But anyways, thank you guys for listening. I was kind of on my soapbox a little bit, but I appreciate it. Thank you.